learning objectives after studying this module students will be able to understand the concept of depreciation know about different terms related to depreciation understand reasons behind charging depreciation understand the need of depreciation learn the methods of calculating depreciation understand the factors that affect the amount of depreciation do comparison between straight line and written off methods learn different ways to record depreciation understand the concept of disposal of assets understand the meaning of provisions and reserves learn about types of reserves understand the concept of secret reserve depreciation matching expenses as we know matching principle of accounting says that whatever expenses are done in the accounting period that should be adjusted within the same year so that the correct profit and loss and financial position of the business can be revealed depreciation in case some expenses are done whose benefits the company is receiving over the years then the amount of those expenses should also be spread over the years rather than charging the expense in that accounting period only when those expenses were done depreciation is one of those kinds of expenses let us discuss about depreciation in detail what is depreciation the depreciation can be defined as the reduction in the value of assets over the years because of use time wear and tear etc for example a business bought a machine that is being used in the business for production process the value of that machine reduces with usage let us take an example a machine is bought for 150000 rupees on 1st april 2006 the useful life of the machine is expected to be 5 years which means that the machine can be used in the business for the next 5 years till 31st march 2011 rupees 150000 is a capital expenditure incurred in the year 2006 but this whole amount cannot be charged as revenue in the current accounting period rather than 1/5 of it would be charged against the revenue for year 2006 that is it would be 30000 rupees depreciation meaning and feature meaning of depreciation depreciation can be defined as permanent over the period and continuous reduction in the value of the assets at which it is bought the institute of cost and management accounting london explained the term depreciation as diminution in intrinsic value of the assets due to use or lapse of time according to institute of chartered accountants of india depreciation is a measure of wearing out consumption or other loss of value of depreciable assets arising from use effluxion of time or obsolescence through technology and market change important things that we should take care while calculating a depreciable amount of assets the depreciable assets should be used more than one accounting period should have a useful life to a certain limit should be used by the business not for sale purpose the expected life of an asset examples of depreciable assets are machines buildings plant and machinery furniture truck for transportation etc features of depreciation it is a reduction in the book value of fixed assets it includes loss of value of the assets due to usage time or obsolescence it is an ongoing process it must be deducted from the profit as it is an expired cost it is considered as an expense without cash important terms used in depreciation there are also some other terms 
used in connection with depreciation. Depletion Depletion means a reduction in the availability of the natural resources like petrol, timber, etc. The difference between depletion and depreciation is that depletion is the reduction of natural resources whereas depreciation is the reduction in the value of the assets due to usage. Amortization Amortization means allocating the cost of an intangible asset over a period of time. It is a routine decrease in the value of an intangible asset. Assets like patents, copyright, trademarks, franchises, etc. Causes of depreciation There are various reasons due to which we charge depreciation. Wear and tear due to usage or time. Wear and tear means when fixed assets of the business are used in the business to earn revenue and with the use the value of the assets reduced and the assets cannot be used further for operation. Another situation is when the assets with the time start deteriorating because of rains, weather, etc. Expiration of legal rights Many assets lose their value because of the expiry of their rights of use, like patents, copyright, etc. Absolescence Sometimes the asset becomes out of date because of the availability of better quality of the assets in the market. Reasons could be a change in technology, change in demand, improved methods of production, etc. Other factors at times, assets become less useful due to natural calamities like fire, earthquake, flood, etc. Need for depreciation There are various reasons due to which we need to calculate depreciation. Matching of cost and revenue The fixed assets are used to generate revenue. Every asset loses value due to wear and tear. So depreciation is the cost like any other expenses in the business and must be charged to calculate the true net profit. Consideration of tax. Depreciation reduces the amount of taxes a company or business pays via tax deductions. True and fair financial position. Depreciation helps to reveal the true and fair financial position of the business. Because if the depreciation is not deducted, then the value of the asset will increase. Compliance with the law The business or companies are abiding by the laws to deduct depreciation from the fixed assets. Factors affecting the amount of depreciation Cost of assets Cost of the asset means the actual cost of the asset. All the expenses that are incurred to bring that asset to the business must be included in the cost like freight expenses, transportation expenses, registration, installation, cost, repair cost in the case of second-hand machines, etc. Estimated net residual value. Residual or scrap value is the expected value that a business may get when the asset is sold or exchanged at the end of its estimated useful life. This amount is calculated after deducting the expenses done for disposing of the asset. Depreciable cost Depreciable cost of assets is its cost after subtracting residual value. It is charged as depreciation expenses over the estimated useful life of an asset. The useful life of an asset, it is the estimated life of an asset in which the asset is used in production. The estimation of useful life of a machine depends upon various factors like usage level, maintenance, technological changes, market changes, etc. Methods of Calculating Depreciation There are two methods of calculating depreciation. Let us discuss them here. We should know few things before choosing the method for calculation of depreciation. Type of asset, nature of the use of assets, in which circumstances the asset would be used. Straight line method. Straight line as the name implies, 
assumes that the asset is being used equally in its complete useful life. As per this method, an equal amount of being charged as depreciation in every accounting year till the asset is being used in the business. This method is also known as fixed percentage on original cost method as the same percentage of depreciable cost is being written off year to year as depreciation. Formula to calculate depreciation under this method is Formula to calculate rate of depreciation is Let us take an example. Suppose the original cost of the assets is 2 lakh an estimated life is 10 years. The residual value is estimated to 30,000. The depreciation would be calculated as Rate of depreciation would be Advantages and limitations of straight line methods Advantages of straight line method Simple and easy to understand. In this method, the calculation of profit and loss is easy as same amount of depreciation is charged. This method is more useful for those assets who estimated life can be calculated easily. In this method, the full depreciable cost is distributed over the useful lifetime of the assets. Limitations of straight line method This method has some drawbacks also. This method assumes that the use of assets is same in each accounting year, which is wrong. As with time, the assets become less productive and demands more repair and maintenance expenses. So it is not advisable to charge the same amount of depreciation every year. Written down value method. This method is also known as reducing balance method. We all know that the book value of the asset reduces every year due to cost of depreciation. So in this method, depreciation is calculated on the book value of the asset. For example, the cost of the asset is 2 lakh and depreciation charged is 10% per annum at written down value method. So the amount of depreciation would be calculated as Advantages and limitations of written down value method Advantages of written down value method This method has the following advantages. This method is based on a practical assumption that benefits from assets go on diminishing with the years. Hence, in this method, higher depreciation is charged in the earlier years when the assets are more useful. It gives equal burden on profit and loss account of depreciation and repair expenses taken together every year. It is acceptable by Income Tax Act also. The loss due to obsolescence gets decreased as large cost of depreciation is charged in the earlier years. Most suitable for fixed assets. Limitations of written off method. This method has the following limitations. As in this method, the depreciation is calculated on the fixed percentage of written down value of the assets. So the cost of the depreciation cannot be written off completely. It is difficult to calculate a suitable rate of depreciation. Comparative analysis of straight line method and written off method. Let us discuss the points of difference between the straight line method and written off method. Basis of charging depreciation. In straight line method, the depreciation is charged on the original cost, whereas in written off method, the depreciation is charged on the net book value of the assets. Annual charge of depreciation. In written off method, the amount of depreciation is higher in earlier years, whereas in straight line method, the amount of depreciation remains fixed. Comparative analysis of depreciation methods Total charge against profit and loss account The total charge against profit and loss account 
in relation to depreciation and repairing cost increases later in straight line method whereas in written down value method depreciation charge reduces in later years recognition by income tax law straight line method is not accepted by income tax law whereas written down value method is accepted by income tax law suitability straight line method is suitable for assets like trademarks copyright in which repair expenses are less whereas written down value is suitable for assets that affected by technological changes methods of recording depreciation there are two types of methods to record depreciation transactions charging depreciation to asset account in this the amount of depreciation is deducted from the depreciable cost of assets and charged to profit and loss account the entries in the journal would be entry for purchase of assets assets account debit to vendors or bank account entry for deducting depreciation from cost of assets depreciation account debit to assets account entry for charging depreciation to profit and loss account profit and loss account debit to depreciation account in balance sheet the assets will appear after deducting depreciation from the cost of assets creating provision for depreciation account in this method a separate account called as depreciation provision account is created to adjust depreciation the entries that would happen in journal account would be for recording purchase of assets only in the year when assets is purchased assets account debit to bank or vendor account for crediting depreciation amount to provision for depreciation account depreciation account debit to provision for depreciation account for charging depreciation to profit and loss account profit and loss account debit to depreciation account in the balance sheet the fixed assets will appear at its original cost and provision for depreciation would be shown under liability side by deducted from the cost of assets disposal of assets the disposal of assets means selling of assets the disposal generally happens during the end of the useful life of an asset at the time it happens during the useful life of an asset if the asset is sold at the end of the useful life of an asset in this case the amount we get from the sale of the asset as scrap should be credited to assets account and the balance is transferred to profit and loss account the journal entry for the same would be for sale of assets as scrap bank account debit to asset account entry for the balance of transfer to profit and loss account if there is profit asset account debit to profit and loss account debit to asset account if there is loss profit and loss account debit to asset account in case of provision for depreciation account has been created then we will make the following entries before doing the following entries provision of depreciation account debit to asset account for example pk limited bought a vehicle for 3 lakh rupees after 4 years its salvage value is estimated of 30000 find the amount of depreciation to be charged each year on straight line method and show how vehicle amount will appear for 4 years assuming it sold for 40000 at the end when a depreciation is charged to assets account b provision of depreciation account is maintained use of assets disposal account assets disposal account the purpose of the asset disposal account is given a clear and complete detail of all transactions involved in the sale of an asset 
under one head. This method is generally used when a part of the asset is sold by the business and provision for depreciation account exists. Under this method, a new account asset disposal account is prepared. The journal entries that would be done for assets disposal account are asset disposal account debit to asset account provision for depreciation account debit to assets disposal account bank account debit to assets disposal account the asset disposal account may show debit and credit balance the debit balance indicates a loss due to disposal whereas credit balance indicates a profit due to disposal the entries would be done as follows in case of loss profit and loss account debit to asset disposal account in case of profit assets disposal account debit to profit and loss account effect of any addition or extension to existing assets any asset we use in business may require extension or additions to make it useful for the operations of the business such amount incurred on the assets is written off as depreciation over the life of an asset as6 mentions that any asset or extension should be depreciated over the useful life of the assets the depreciation should be provided at the rate applied to the existing asset where addition or extension of the assets is treated as a separate entity and can be used even if after the disposing of the assets provisions and reserves what is a provision provision is an arrangement that is made for the expenses and losses of the current accounting period but the exact amount of which is not known because they are not yet incurred examples of provisions are provision for depreciation provision for doubtful debts provision for taxation provision for discount on debtors provision for renewals and repairs the amount of provision for expenses is chargeable against the revenue of the business provisions make sure proper matching of revenues and expenditures and calculations of the actual profits in the balance sheet the amount of provisions must be shown as as a deduction from the current assets on the asset side on the liability side of the balance sheet with liabilities accounting treatment for provisions the accounting treatment for all types of provisions is the same let us take an example of provision for doubtful debt there are three types of debtors good debtors the debtors from whom the amount will certainly come bad debtors the debtors from where the amount of recovery is impossible doubtful debtors the debtors who may pay but business people are not sure when and how much they will pay the journal entry relating to the same would be done as profit and loss account debit to provision for doubtful debts reserves what is a reserve when a part of the profit is kept aside and retained for the future needs of the business like growth and to meet future contingencies Reserves are the appropriation of the profit to strengthen the financial position of the business. When we retain reserves from profit to meet future needs, then the amount that is available for distribution of profits to owners is reduced. Examples of reserves are general reserve, compensation of workman funds, capital reserve, reserve for the redemption of debentures. difference between reserves and provisions basic nature a provision is charged against profits whereas reserves are not purpose reserve strengthens the financial position of the business whereas provisions meet the expenses of known liability 
presentation in the balance sheet. Provision is shown under the deductions from the asset side or liabilities side along with current liabilities whereas reserves are on the liabilities side after capital. Effects on taxable profits. Provision reduces taxable profits whereas a reserve has no effect on taxable profits. Elements of compulsion. Provisions are necessary to reveal the true and exact financial position of the business, whereas creating reserves is the management's decision. Use for the payment of dividend. Reserves are created to be used for payment of dividends, whereas the provisions cannot be used for dividends. Types of reserves. There are different types of reserves. Let us discuss them one by one. General Reserve When the purpose of the reserve is not specified, then it is called as General Reserve. This reserve can be utilized freely by the business of its purpose. Specific Reserve This reserve is created to solve some specific purpose. Examples are Dividend Equalization Reserve, Workmen Compensation Funds, Investment Fluctuation Funds, Debentures Redemption Reserves, Revenue Reserve. These reserves are generated from the profits of business due to normal operations of the business and can be used for distribution of dividends. Capital Reserves. These reserves are generated through capital profits, which are not due to normal operations of the business. So, these reserves are not available for distribution of debentures. It can be sued for writing off losses. Difference between capital and revenue reserves. Sources of creation. Revenue reserves are created out of normal operations of the business, whereas a capital reserve is generated from capital profits. Purpose Revenue reserve strengthens the financial position of the business, whereas capital reserve is created for legal requirements. Usage General reserve can be utilized for any purpose, whereas specific reserve can be utilized for specific purposes. Importance of reserves. A business always needs to make some arrangements to protect itself from unknown expenses and losses. At times for the expansion of business or any other related expenditures, the proprietor does not withdraw much amount as profits so that the amount can be utilized for expansion of the business. The purpose for which the business keep money aside as reserves are meeting a future demand or shortage, strengthening the financial position of the business, redemption of a long-term liability. What is secret reserve? The reserve a business does not display in the balance sheet. It also reduces the disclosed profits and also reduces the tax liability. These kinds of reserves can be merged with the profits to show increased profits at the time of low profits. It is known as a secret reserve as even outside stakeholders do not know about these reserves. Ways of creating secret reserve Undervaluation of stock Charging capital profits to profit and loss account Making excessive provision for doubtful debts Showing contingent liabilities as actual liabilities. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned in this module. Matching principle of accounting says that the expenses that are done in the current accounting year should be adjusted within the same year. The depreciation can be defined as the reduction in the value of assets over the years because of use, time wear and tear, etc. 
points to be considered while calculating depreciation are the depreciable assets should be used more than one accounting period should have a useful life to a certain limit should be used by the business for use not for sale purpose expected life of an asset depletion means reduction in the availability of the natural resources like petrol timber etc the reserve of a business does not display in the balance sheet it also reduces the disclosed profits and also reduces the tax liability amortization means allocating the cost of an intangible asset over a period of time residual or scrap value is the expected value that a business may get when the asset is sold or exchanged at the end of its estimated useful life depreciable cost of assets is its cost after subtracting residual value straight line as the name implies assumes that the asset is being used equally in its complete useful life in written down value method depreciation is calculated on the book value of the asset provision is an arrangement that is made for the expenses or losses of the current accounting period when a part of the profit is kept aside and retained for the future needs of the business like growth and to meet future contingencies are called as reserves when the purpose of reserve is not specified then it is called as general reserve the reserves are generated from the profits of business due to normal operations of the business and can be used for distribution of dividends